Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. So, I haven't been making videos for the past, probably about two months. I've been taking a uh, small break from making videos, and that's mainly just because I haven't really found the passion of, or really the desire to do it. Well, actually, that's not true. I always have the desire to do it, but I just feel that if I don't put 100% of the effort into a video that it deserves, then it really doesn't need to be made at all so you know like why make a video if it's going to be low quality so and i just haven't had the the urge to i don't know put in the effort that's really necessary to make something good and that's really kind of dumb in my opinion so i thought you know what the hell what am i doing here so i, I just uh got up and got right to work on making a video that I thought you guys would enjoy, which is on Nickel-1 and Nickel Monocyanide, or Nickel-1 Cyanide. So, with all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoy this video, and I am, again, sorry about the delay. So, with that being said, I hope you all enjoy as always, and I'll see you next time. Ah, nickel. Element 28. Squeezed in between cobalt and copper. 99% of the time, you're going to see nickel happily present in its plus 2 oxidation state. However, if you slam nickel in just the right way, under just the right conditions, with some very powerful reducing agents, then nickel will have no choice but to change into its rare plus 1 oxidation state. Like cobalt, nickel compounds have a range of possible colors in which they may appear. For nickel, the four most common colors are dark blue, purple, green, and light blue, with green being the most common color for compounds of nickel. Rarer instances of nickel compounds have a vibrant red color, one such example being nickel's complex with dimethylglyoxine. Only very rarely do you come across nickel compounds with a yellow or orange color. Now for the synthesis. This synthesis tends to get moronically dangerous at times due to the nature of the materials involved. These include, but are not limited to, sodium metal, soluble nickel salts, metallic mercury, sodium amalgam, hydrogen cyanide, potassium cyanide, cyanonicolates, hydrogen gas, strong hot solutions of hydroxides, strong acids, the color yellow. Now that you understand as to why you shouldn't ever do this shit, it's time to get down to business. First, let's look at what we're going to be using today. You can see a yellow liquid there. I'll start by crushing your hopes. This isn't urine. Instead, it's a solution of potassium tetracyanonicolate, which I made by reacting nickel to cyanide with a solution of potassium cyanide to form this nice yellow colored solution. Anyway, for the first version of the synthesis, we're going to need a strong acid reducing agent, and in this case, I'm going to use sodium amalgam. Here we have some sodium metal, and after only a short time in contact with atmospheric moisture, you can see a nice crust on the surface of the metal. Cutting a small piece off and dropping it into the mercury affords sodium amalgam, which is basically just an alloy of sodium with mercury. This alloy produces hydrogen at a controlled rate when put in an aqueous solution, a property which we can take advantage of in order to reduce nickel-2 down to nickel-1. All we gotta do now is add the amalgam to the solution of tetracyanonicolate. Immediately upon addition, we can see a dark red color forming in the mixture along with a large amount of hydrogen gas being evolved. This red color is the color of the nickel-1 complex, the formula of which looks like this.
After the mixture had sufficient time to react, I wanted to try something. After reading the atomistry page on nickel, I came across a listing for a compound called nickel monocyanide. To my surprise, it's simple to make. Add a solution of nickel-1 to a solution of a strong acid in water. Something to note here is that if the amount of acid in the solution is too high, then the monocyanide will simply decompose into nickel-2 chloride and HCN. My mistake here was underestimating the power of glacial acetic acid. I added more than I should have to the water in the beaker, and caught but the slightest hint of HCN. Oops. The monocyanide is a vibrant orange powder which is stable in air for a period of up to an hour. In this time, it's oxidized to nickel-2 cyanide. The first step in the second method involves making a solution of tetracyanonicolate strongly basic with a solution of a hydroxide. This is then put in a graduated cylinder and a small amount of toluene is added on top as a sort of barrier to atmospheric oxygen. Granulated zinc is then added which reacts with the hydroxide in the solution to form hydrogen gas. Hydrogen then reduces nickel 2 to nickel 1. We can see this as a darkening in the color of the solution over time. Despite being safer than method 1, method 2 takes much longer. You can expect to wait about 20 minutes to see serious results. The second time around, I was successful in making nickel-1 cyanide. You can see as I add this solution of nickel-1 to a solution of now dilute hydrochloric acid, there is a orange to yellow precipitate, which is clearly visible in the large beaker on the right. This is nickel-1 cyanide, and it can be dried, but it won't last very long, as we saw earlier. Thank you so much to my very kind Patreon supporters for making videos like this possible now more than ever. It's been really hard as far as funding these videos goes, and they've single-handedly made it possible for me to continue making videos like this one, so all thanks goes to them. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.